In this presentation, we will understand special program number 3, Multiplication Table Pattern. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The topic of this presentation is Special Program Print the Multiplication Table Pattern. In this lecture, we will understand how to print the multiplication table pattern on the screen. But before that, we first need to understand the problem statement properly. So, let's look at the problem statement first. Write a program to print the multiplication table pattern as shown. We need to print this multiplication table pattern on the screen. In order to print this pattern, first we need to decide the number of rows and columns needed to print this pattern properly. And we need to write the program in such a way that we can print any size multiplication table pattern like this. Let's now decide how many rows and columns we need in order to print this pattern. For this purpose, we can draw lines around these numbers and this will form the grid and it helps us in deciding the number of rows and columns needed to print this pattern. So, let's just draw those lines. This is how our grid looks like after drawing the lines. Here we can observe that we need a total of 5 rows and 5 columns. So, from the user, we just need to ask the number of rows and from number of rows, we can easily deduce the number of columns because rows and columns are exactly the same. Now, it can also be observed that each row number decides the multiples that will be printed on that specific row. Like in this case, we can observe that row number 5 will tell us that what are the multiples that will be printed in this row. The multiples of 5 will be printed in this row up to column number 5. Similarly, if we observe row number 4, then only multiples of 4 will be printed in this row up to column number 4. If we observe row number 3, then multiples of 3 will be printed up to column number 3. So, with this information in hand, we are now ready to write a program to print the multiplication table pattern as shown here. Now, let's write the program. First, we need to ask the user to enter the number of rows. We can do that with the help of input function. We can provide the prompt to the input function. We will receive the input, but we will receive the input in the form of string. We first need to convert that to integer and we can do that by passing input method directly to the int method. And from the int method, we will receive the integer which we can store in some variable. So, this is how the line of code looks like. Rows equal to int, input, enter the number of rows. Here we are asking the user to enter the number of rows. Number of rows will be entered by the user. We will provide that to this rows variable in the form of integer. Now, what is the next step? We need nested for loops to print this pattern correctly. This is what we have learned in our last lecture where we discussed how to print the right triangle number pattern on the screen. The outer for loop represents the rows and inner for loop represents the columns. The outer for loop looks like this. For i in range 1 comma rows plus 1. Here we need to provide rows plus 1 as the second argument to the range function because we must stop at rows. This means that if rows is 5, then we must stop at 5. This means we want 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 as it can be observed that if the number of rows entered by the user is 5, then this means that we need values from 1 to 5. Hence, this range function must return values from 1 to 5 when rows is 5. So, this is the outer for statement for i in range 1 comma rows plus 1. Now, how does inner for statement looks like? This is our inner for statement for j in range 1 comma i plus 1. Here the second argument is i plus 1 because the column number depends upon the row number. If we are at row number 5, then we must stop at column number 5. If we are at row number 3, then we must stop at column number 3. Hence, i plus 1 is provided as the second argument to the range function. Now, within this for loop, we need to calculate the multiple and print that multiple. Now, that multiple depends upon the row number we are at currently. Also, 
we can calculate the multiple by multiplying the row number by the column number. If we multiply 2 by 1, we will get 2 here. If we multiply 2 by 2, we will get 4 here. Similarly, if we multiply 5 by 1, we will get 5. If we multiply 5 by 2, we will get 10. If we multiply 5 by 3, we will get 15. So, we can use row number and column number to print the multiples correctly on the screen. Here, we need to calculate i into j because i represents the row number and j represents the column number. So, we can write this statement square equal to i into j. Here, the square is the temporary variable holding the value of i into j. Now, we can print square on the screen by using the print function. This is how our print function looks like. Print square, then the second argument provided here is end equal to single quotes and within these single quotes, one white space character. This is required because after printing each number, we also want to print the white space character. For example, after printing 2, we want the white space character. After printing 4, we want the white space character. After printing 8, we want the white space character. So, with this, I hope the program is completely clear. Here, we are multiplying i and j because it can be observed that we can obtain these values by multiplying their respective row number and column number. If we are at row number 4 and column number 3, we know that the multiple will be 4 into 3, which is 12. That is why we are obtaining 12 here. And it can be observed that 12 is written here. So, in this way, we can calculate these values and print them on the screen. Now, what is the next step? We are not done with this code yet. After this for loop, we need to print the new line because we know that after completing a row, we must go to the next line. Therefore, this print function is also needed. We can put single quotes or we can leave these parentheses blank. Both will do the same thing. This print function will print a new line for us. Now, as we are done with this code, let's run this code line by line. In the first line, we are asking the user to enter the number of rows. So, let's print this prompt on the screen. Enter the number of rows. Let's say user has entered 5. Then this rows variable will receive value 5. This is how our rows variable looks like. Now, rows is pointing to this object with value 5. After this, this for statement will be executed. Here we know that this variable i will receive value 1 because range function will return values 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and this variable will receive these values one at a time. First variable i will receive value 1. Therefore, i must point to this object with value 1. After this, this statement will be executed for j in range 1 comma i plus 1. We know value of i is 1, therefore this will be replaced by 2. We will get only one value from this range function, which is 1. Therefore, variable j will receive 1. Hence, we can say that variable j is pointing to this value 1. Now, after this, the next step is to execute this statement square equal to i into j. This means we need one more variable square and square will hold the multiplication of i and j. What is i? i is 1. What is j? j is 1. 1 into 1 is 1. Therefore, we will get 1 here in the square variable. So, it makes sense that square variable must point to this object with value 1. Now, what is the next step? We need to print square on the screen along with the white space. We know that we are at row number 1 and column number 1 because i is 1 and j is also 1. And 1 must be printed here and we are getting the result as 1 in the square as well. Therefore, 1 will be printed on the screen. Hence, we will get 1 here in the first row. After this, we know that this for loop will terminate because j has received its value already. Now, after this for loop, this print function must be executed and this allows us to print a new line here. Now, we are at new line. Let's execute this line for i in range 1, rows plus 1. 
This time variable i will receive value 2. So we can replace this value by 2. Now after this, this statement must be executed. For the first time, j will receive 1. Then the second time, j will receive 2. And then we must terminate this loop. Here we already have 1 here. After this, this statement must be executed. Square equal to i into j. What is i? i is 2. What is j? j is 1. Therefore, this value must be replaced by 2. Now after this, we need to print square along with the white space. Therefore, 2 will be printed on the screen along with the white space. Now after this, we again need to execute this statement. This time, variable j will receive value 2. After this, we need to execute this line square equal to i into j. We will get 4 here because i is 2 and j is also 2. So, square variable must point to this value 4. After this, this statement must be executed. This time, 4 will be printed on the screen along with the white space. Now, we are done with this for loop and we need to execute this statement. We will get a new line here. After this, we need to execute this statement. This time, variable i will receive value 3. So, here we need to replace this value by 3. Now, after this, we need to execute this statement. This time, j will receive 1. We need to replace this by 1. Now, after this, we need to execute this statement. i must be multiplied by j. Here, we will get 3 because i is 3 and j is 1. So, square must point to this object with value 3. Now, after this, this statement must be executed. Square will be printed, which is 3 along with the white space. So, we'll get 3 along with the white space. Now, we need to execute this statement. This time, j must point to object with value 2. Now, after this, we need to execute this statement. i and j must be multiplied. 3 into 2 will give us 6. So, square must point to the object with value 6. Now, after this, we need to execute this statement. Square must be printed on the screen along with the white space. So, we will get 6 along with the white space. Now, we need to execute this statement once again. This time, j is pointing to this object with value 3. Now, after this, let's execute this statement. i into j will give us 9 because i is 3 and j is also 3. So, square must point to object with value 9. Now, we need to print square along with the white space. So, we will get 9 over here. Now, we know that we are done with this for loop. So, we now need to execute this statement. This means that the new line will be printed on the screen. Now, the rest of the values can easily be printed. Here, we will get 4. Then, we will get 8. Then, 12. Then, 16. After this, in the new line, we will get 5. Then, 10. Then, 15. Then, 20. Then, 25. This is the last value we will get here. So, this is the complete output we are getting. And this output is matching with the desired output. Now, let's execute this program in Visual Studio Code to verify the result that we are getting here. Right now, I am in my Python work folder. And within this folder, I have created this file, multiplication table pattern.py. Within this file, I have written this code. This code is exactly the same what we have seen in the presentation. Now, let's execute this code. For this, we need to open the new terminal. And here, we need to type this command, python, then white space, then name of the file, followed by .py extension. So, let's type this. Now, let's hit enter. Let's enter the number of rows here. Here, we are getting the correct output. Now, let's execute this code once again. And let's check for some other rows. This time, let's enter 10. Here, we can observe that we are getting the correct multiples in the specific rows. Here, in row number 9, we are getting 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, which is correct. 
So we have verified our code and we can confidently say that our code is working correctly. Now let's get back to our presentation. So we have understood how to write the program to print the multiplication table pattern like this on the screen. This means that we are done with this topic and we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.